Good morning and Happy New Year. This is Leticia. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Tuesday, January 1st, 2019, and I am in the midst of making a hot mess or trying to fix a hot mess. So this is my new year kind of new start. And I say kind of new start because you can almost see right here where two little Jessica stitches used to be in Esther's waves. And I had to rip them all out um, because I realized the reason I'm scaring the cat. The reason why this is Esther's waves right here. The reason why this project was such a hot mess for me when I started it months ago was because I did all my Jessica stitches wrong. I did them incorrectly. I had them going over four squares instead of over two. They were much bigger than they needed to be. Um, and the second Jessica stitch that I started was down here where it needed to be up here. So I ripped everything out and I restarted it. And you can see the outline there of where the old Jessica stitch used to be. And that's the actual size that it's supposed to be. And I quickly, quickly realized I cannot do this mess on 40 count. This is 40 count vintage country mocha, I believe. Mm, I think, I think that's vintage country mocha. I can't do this on 40 count. I mean, not even with my mag eyes over my glasses. No, 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 no. So I'm actually in the process of restarting this and I'm pulling a old switcheroo because last night, New Year's Eve, I think it was around 1030. I got a message from um, one of my Facebook stitchy friends, Sharon, who said, hey, Leticia, I'm sure you've seen this already, and I know you just finished your peacock sampler, but did you see the new linens and thread sow? It's peacocks. No, I did not. I was not aware. So I went looking, and it's free. And so, of course, I instantly went to my LNS, Letitia's Needle Workshop, and dug out um, some fabric and a silks for you hang. Now, I wasn't sure how I felt about this. This is my start. I wasn't sure how I felt about this on this blue fabric. Um, and then I thought to myself when I was deciding I needed to redo on a different count fabric, I was like, self, you have this lovely 32 count Lagana Storm. Esther's Waves will fit beautifully on there. You have your lovely array of blue flosses, right? How about that, Mika? You have your, oh, there's Tribal Monkey in the background. You have your lovely array of blue and purple flosses, right? Why not? Just do the old switcheroonie. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm switching these out. Esther's Waves will now be on Storm. This is technically not a new start because I've already started it, but I'm restarting it. Um... And I don't know whose logic that was, but I'm agreeing with it. Somebody just mentioned that in the video. It's not a new start if you're restarting it. It might have been Michelle. So I'm in the process of frogging out the little peacock that I started last night. And I'm going to do Esther's waves on this. But then I was like, so what do I do with this 40 count fabric? You put the peacock on there. The peacock's out on there. How gorgeous is that? Yeah. So this is where the Linens and Threads Peacock style is going to go. And it's going to use this hank of silk from Silks For You. And this is PR142. Yeah. Pretty great. Pretty great. So I'm going to completely switch these out. And the Peacock style will go on this. And Esther's Waves will go on this. So... That's my update. I thought it would be quicker to film it than to try to explain it a week from now when I do an update video. So, yeah. That's that. Happy New Year, everybody. See you soon. Bye. Uh, just popping in for a quick update on my Esther's Waves. As you can see, I have um, stitched most of the Jessica stitches. Pretty proud of how they came out. Lots of frogging because Jessica stitches, right? But I wanted to zoom in 
and just show you this variegation that I don't think would show up um, when I'm showing my um, updates. I just wanted to zoom in and show you how beautifully variegated the floss is. I really love like the contradiction here in colors with that super light versus a super rich. Um, this is emerald. Not sure what happened there. This is emerald, the first color in the colorway. Um, but I just wanted to zoom in so you guys could see the Jessica stitches uh, up close and just really appreciate with me how beautiful this floss is. And this is stitched one over two on 32 count storm. Think of a stormy, stormy, cloudy sky. That's what this fabric really looks like. Kind of just looks gray here, but that's what it is. And this is the Fiberlicious Thread. I'm using, like I said, it's one over two. Um, but it, it's doing beautifully on, oh, hello kitty. It's doing beautifully on 32 count. Once I finish this, I'll go into some cross stitches, um, but this isn't the type of pattern where coverage really matters much. Um, so I'm fine with the 32 count. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned it in my previous video, but doing this on 40 count, now my eyes aren't what they used to be. I can see 40 count, like I'm doing the um, 2019 Linens and Threads Peacock style. Using the 40 count, I actually just swapped out the fabrics and it's perfectly fine. But doing Jessica stitches and specialty stitches on it, it was wreaking havoc on my eyes. And I think that's honestly why I messed those first <clears throat> those first two Jessica stitches up um, to begin with. And that's what was wrong. I, I messed up the Jessica stitches, the count and everything. The stitches were done correctly, but my count was off, which is why I couldn't figure out um, how to line these up because everything was off. So um, I ripped that out and literally just swapped out the, the fabrics. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you an up close and personal look at the Jessica stitches and the beautiful variegation. So yeah, um, hopefully I will be able to do an update on Saturday or Sunday. Saturday is the all day DC Metro Stitchers meetup. So I'm looking forward to seeing some familiar faces that I haven't seen um, since Stitch Fest. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, my husband is coming along and he will be somewhere in the library working on his novel and we will be stitching the day away and hopefully won't forget that he's there when it's time to leave. Anyway, so I'll be doing an update on Saturday or Sunday, but I just wanted to show you this right here. All right, bye-bye. Just take a second to talk about how sparkly this little octopus is. And it seemed perfect since we're stitching Esther's waves. There's an octopus in the waves. And apparently cats with underwear on their head and in their hands and on their butt. Makes total sense. Hi guys, it's Leticia. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Sunday, January 6th, um, 2019. Happy New Year. I hope everybody has had um, a fantastic first week of the year. Um, and if it was a challenging first week for you for some reason, I hope you found a way to work through it or found new or positive ways to deal with with, every, with whatever you're dealing with. So I hope it was a good first week. Um, it's been a good first week for me. I was off most of the week. Um, I worked on Monday, New Year's Eve, and returned to work on Friday. Um, so that was a little unusual, but it's how I planned it. Um, not much going on. I had um, a new start earlier this week that I'm going to share with you. I think I've shared it on... Um, yeah, I shared it on, um, Instagram and Facebook, but I don't know if I shared it in my last video. No, because I started it on New Year's Eve. What am I talking about? Anyway, that's how we're kicking off this video. 
Um, so first I want to do a quick shout out um, to um, a couple of people. The first one is uh, Bev at Palette PC. Uh, last week she posted her whip parade. She also posted a finishes parade. Um, Bev is one of those people that always is behind the scenes. She doesn't get in front of the camera, but she always has um, like a fantastic a fantastically edited slideshow with great music um, and I'm bringing her up because I know there was somebody that posted in one of the groups Stitch Mania maybe Friday off the grid um, that they wanted to start floss tubing but they were concerned because they didn't want to be in front of the camera and they were like does anybody do floss tubes um, behind the scenes and Bev is a perfect example um, her videos are usually short and sweet but they have a lot of content and um she has a lot of fantastic projects that she is always working on so i will link her channel palette pc below um the second person that i want to give a shout out to i spent a lot of time with this week virtually and i found this person by way of our darling bluebell nika who shared with us in her last video um, that she spent New Year's Eve at Euro Disney in Paris and I was obscenely jealous. I've never been to Paris and I can't not possibly think of a more magical way to spend your New Year's Eve than at Euro Disney. Um, but enough about my jealousy and I'm not jealous because she totally deserved that. It was a great way to start off her year and I'm, I'm very happy for her. So she was talking about Marie, um, who is Mev Stitches in Paris. And I believe she's Mev Stitches in Paris on Instagram and on YouTube. And I had never heard of her. Um, so I went to her channel because if Mika likes it, I will like it. And it proved to be true. So I visited with Mev and Stitches. Her name is uh, Marie. And she is one of those delightful people that just truly expresses her joy and the love of not only her needlework, but of being a part of the community. And you feel that in her enthusiasm, in her emotion, in the way that she describes her needlework, the joy that she gets um, from gifting her needlework. She's one of those people that the majority of what she stitches is for other people. But I think in one of her more recent videos, because I'm all caught up now, um, she has her 12 videos out. Her last one was released today, or yesterday, rather. Um, and she talks about how she so appreciates how her stitching brings her closer with her mom and her aunt, who she's very close to, because they share their craftiness with her, whether it's in helping her finish her pieces or... Um, teaching her how to um, delve into the world of embroidery. She did a fantastic finish. Um, and it's actually the thumbnail, the back shot for her channel, which is an African lady that she stitched. Her aunt did a fantastic finish using like tree branches. And I'm, it was magical. It was brilliant. Um, there was something so rustic and perfect about it. But anyway... Um, Mev shows her stitching, her beautiful stitching. Um, she likes baps, which, you know, is near and dear to my heart. Um, and she's one of those people that likes to teach you things in her video. So every single video, she will talk about, um, um, the background of a certain word, whether it's a word that was shared, um, both that was derived from the French language and used frequently in the English language, but might have something unique and different that maybe people didn't know. Um, I believe she studied linguistics, so she has a very unique take on, on a lot of things. She's just very interesting to watch. I truly, truly enjoyed her. Um, so that was a huge shout out to both um, Mev and Palette PC. Thank you for sharing yourselves with us, and I appreciate you. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to jump right in. I have some whip updates. Um, I'm no longer working on Tribal Monkey. He is outside of my rotation. Um, but I will show you where I left off with him because I stopped stitching on him 
on the 31st. I stitched on him for the remainder of the year. Um, and then I picked up Esther's Waves. Thank you guys for all the love that you're giving on Instagram and Facebook for Esther's Waves. I truly appreciate it. Um, it's a beautiful project and I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I think by the time I finish it, I'm going to like really have the Jessica stitches perfected because there's a lot of them in this project. I mean, a lot, a lot. Um, so I appreciate all the love with that, but I picked up Esther's Waves as my new start, um, for 2019 because it had two Jessica stitches in it. And I think I filmed a couple of snippets before this where I explained how, um, or had explained why it was calculus, um, and couldn't figure it out what I was doing wrong because I did the whole thing wrong. Um, so I might as well just show it to you, right? So here's Esther's Waves. Um, I started it again on, I think I switched them out on New Year's Eve, to be honest with you. No, no, I picked it up on, I restarted it on this fabric, which is 32 count Luganas in Storm. Um, I restarted it on New Year's Day. Um, so here we are on Sunday and I finished this first band this pattern, this is all Jessica stitches right here. It's repeated throughout the entire pattern um, between each band. So this is what's considered the band. And then you have another wave of Jessica stitches. Um, so this band is filled with, what are these? Are they raised stitches? I don't know what they are. I think they're raised stitches. And then you see all the beadwork. This is probably the first project that I'm truly going to bead as I go because it makes sense. Um, and as I roll up, using my roll of frames here, as I roll up on the roll of frame, I will probably put a piece of felt here or batting to cover the stitches and I think it'll be just fine. Yesterday, um, I should give you a close up there. Yesterday, I went to the D.C. Metro Stitchers Meetup in Fairfax, Virginia at the Fairfax County Library. And I worked on um, most of this band here. I think I finished maybe five of these little diamonds while I was there. Um, and that was always, always a great time with those ladies. It was, um, we met from 10 to 5. I got there around noon. Um, Miss Oso Crafty was there, um, Minnie, Amy Loves Toads, and um, Melissa, um, I'm trying to think of all the floss tubers that were there first. Um, this Nana Stitches, Tamara, um, going down the line. I think those were all the floss tubers that were there. Um, and then some people that you may know from Instagram, Samara, Jan, um, Leah, uh, Ken Quilts on Instagram, Jennifer, I want to say her name is, and several other people that um, I not only knew from the DC Metro meetup, but also that I went to retreats with. Um, so fun fact, a lot of those people are going to be in Jersey with us. So it's always good to spend time with them and the stitchers. Um, but that's where I am on Esther's Waves. And I will be doing this piece until the 15th of January. And then I switch off. Um, so for the, my foot is asleep. So for the remainder of this year, I have myself set up, um, <clears throat> with a series of projects that I want to finish that I have appearing, I think at least three times throughout the remainder of the year for two week periods, um, before, um, I'm not being clear. I have several projects that I want to focus on finishing this year. Um, and the projects that I'm focusing on finishing, I have coming up several times throughout the year. Um, for a two week rotation, because I found that when I focus on a project for two weeks, I get quite a bit done. Um, excuse me, my mouth is very dry. I get quite a bit done when I do it for two weeks. And the other projects, most of which you saw when I did my impromptu mini whip parade are going to be my high tea whips 
that I bring out um, on high tea Sundays and then stitch on the following Friday um, until the next high tea. That seems to be working, so we'll see how far I get. Um, I am focusing on not buying anything new at least for the first six to eight months of the year. Um, I don't know if I'll go so far as to say I'm not doing any new starts. I don't know if I'll go so far as to say that, but what I'm really concentrating on is knocking out some of my whips, um, like the Oriental Oak Orchids. Um, where is that? Is that in here? Yes. The Oriental Orchids I pulled out for December high tea, the last Sunday of December. This is my oldest cross-stitch project, my oldest whip. I started this in 2006. Um, I posted some pictures on Instagram of my bra storage system back in 2006. It's a hot mess, but I'm working my way through it. And here we are, excuse all the wrinkles. Here is our progress with Oriental Orchids. This is a DMC kit from Dimen a DMC kit, a Dimensions kit. There we go. So I don't have a lot to do, but I think in my last video I talked about the reason why I haven't worked on this is because I lost half the pattern. Well, I did. I lost half the pattern um, for some of the outlines, the back stitch. I don't know what the colors are. Um, several of the symbols in this top flower, this top flower is all I have left to do as far as the flowers go. I don't know what the colors are for this top flower. Like I'm looking at the previous flowers, um, with those symbols that are in there with a magnifying glass and the brightest light I can find to try to match up the floss. The back stitching, I'm going to have to match up the floss. And the funny thing is, I think a few years back, I asked for help on this project because I lost half the pattern. And I think somebody helped me. And I think it was Bev. I think it was Bev that helped me. But then I lost what she gave me. I don't, <laughs> I know she helped me with the colors for like some of the outlines, but I don't know what I did with those notes. But I remember I was very appreciative that she could help me out. So I'm kind of just winging it, which isn't that bad. I, I can wing it. Um, because the flower, the orchid itself is pretty repetitive. Um, so you can't tell, honestly, where, um, where I winged it with the colors or if they were inaccurate. You really couldn't tell. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But this project is just like something. It's like, there's my floss storage system. Look at the metallics down there. That's how I stored them. I just kind of threw them in the bag. You know, it's an adventure. That's how I'm looking at it. So that's that whip. Um, like I said, I pulled it out for a December high tea, and I'll be working on it every Friday for the remainder of this month. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll finish it. Um, I'm hoping. So that's that. Um... The Sunflower for Troy, I told you guys about that I restarted it on 22 count fabric because I didn't trust the MCG textiles fabric and I restarted it and I decided to do it on 10 stitch, to do 10 stitch on it. That's where we are. That is the border, the outside border. Not much to speak of, but there you go. And as you can see, the 10 stitch, it's pretty good as far as coverage goes. But I'm not really worried about the coverage. I think it'll be fine, even if it's not perfect. But it's looking it's looking pretty good. Um, so that's the sunflower. And the actual stitching, I think, will be fairly small. But I'm going to mat it, put a nice mat on there with a nice frame. And then I'll give it a nice size, I think. The next whip I have was my new start which I absolutely wasn't planning. Um, but several people reached out to me um, about the Linens and Threads 2019 Stitch Along, Mystery Stitch Along, which featured, of all things, peacocks. Um, and I think the first time I heard about it was late on New Year's Eve. It was Sharon. Sharon was the first person 
to reach out to me. And as soon as I looked it up and saw that number one, that it was free, number two, that it was Peacock's, I literally stopped what I was doing. I stopped working on poor tribal monkey. Poor Cornelius, Cornelius got tossed to the side. And I went rummaging in my LNS, Letitia's Needle Workshop. And I found fabric and I found floss. So the original fabric that I pulled out was actually the 32 count Lugana Storm that I'm stitching Esther's Waves on. And I pulled out this silks for you. How delicious is that the silks for you with magentas and purples and um pale pale green gold and blue that was the original plan these were going to be this was going to be the peacock sow right and then i realized number one when i realized my jessica stitches were wrong using um 40 count country mocha which was what my esther's waves was originally on when i took the jessica stitches out and tried to redo it i realized so quickly i could not possibly do esther's waves on 40 count so i switched the fabrics and it was fine it's perfect because here's the beginning of my peacock and it's funny how these colors look so muted here and so rich and vibrant here it's so funny how that works out um, but that's the beginning of my peacock and I'm stitching this a little bit differently because I didn't want the stripey effect um, like what happened with my dragons of Sumatra so what I'm doing differently is like right here I completely outlined his head and neck and his chest slash torso and then I filled it in going in the same directions the same here and the same you can see where I outlined um, part of his body here and then I'll just go in and fill that negative space in going in the same direction and that's what gives it that stained glass type of effect so that's the beginning of my peacock my plan is to try to work on this for like an hour a day and um, that's how I'm going to attempt to keep up with the sow I normally don't participate in sows because I never keep up with them um, I'm not responsible when it comes to sows. I can't be counted on to keep up or to follow through. I'm not good with sows. Um, but this one I really wanted to do. Um, so I'm going to try to give it an hour a day and I'm already failing because I didn't work on it at all yesterday. I took it to the DC Metro Stitchers meetup and I forgot my floss. So I haven't worked on it yet today, so I'll probably work on it, um, later on tonight. Um, as I'm winding down and getting ready for tomorrow. Um, I have some in, some chicken in the Instant Pot cooking right now, so that's what's for dinner. How random was that? Um, totally random. But anyway, that's my peacock. Um, the next thing I started, I don't have my notebook with me, so I don't know when I started this. I swear I showed this before, but I think it might have only been in um I did I did because Mika was watching this while watching my last video while she was um in Paris and I blamed her for getting this pattern um so I did show this before but here's an update on not quite white work by Northern Expressions Needlework um the only thing that I have finished on it since I showed it to you last is the letter C yeah, I definitely showed this to you guys before. Sorry, I just hit the tripod. So that's the status on this one. I did ABC. Um, and there's no, this isn't in a rotation or anything. It probably will be if I take out, um, once I finish the Oriental Orchids, I'm going to add something else into that focus on a finished rotation for the remainder of the year. Um, and maybe this will be a high tea whip or just something that I work on. It might be a travel piece. I have no idea. Um, it's one of those things you just start without any sort of real deadline in mind. Um, the last whip update that I have is our friend Tribal Monkeys, just so I can show you where we ended off with him. Um, he is a focus on a finish this year. So this is where we ended. 
Ugh. I don't know where we were the last time that I showed them to you. I don't remember where we were. Um, but I know that I filled in, I call them his freckles. I added his freckles right here. Um, and I'm working on filling in all of this negative space here because I made a boo-boo somewhere up there. Um, and I'm just kind of working around it. Um, so that's where we are. In my mind, I'm going to finish him this year. Now, right now, Tribal Monkey doesn't come out again until April. So I must have a magical two weeks planned in April, but then he'll come out again before the year is out. Maybe one more, maybe two more times. I don't know. But like I said, I've been noticing I get a lot done in these two weeks period, two week periods where that's all I stitch on except on Friday nights where I stitch on my high teepees. Um, so that was it for my webs. The last thing I have is some haul. Um, like I said, I'm trying not to buy anything unnecessarily. Um, I'm challenging myself not to buy anything unnecessarily, at least for the first six to eight months. But these items that came in, I purchased well before the year was over. Um, one of which is my unicorn pattern. Um, and I'm very excited about that. So, um, I know I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I was extremely envious of Tosh, the star, star cross stitcher for her Celtic sampler. And I reached out to McKenna, who um, was able to obtain it at the attic. But there was some confusion on my part, obviously, 100% on my part. Because from what I understood, the patterns came out in two parts. So my understanding was that there are two parts to that one pattern. No, there are two parts of a huge pattern. So the first part is... I'm going to cover up the price there. The first part is this one. This is what Tosh is working on. And this is the Celtic Sampler by Wallace. And this is part one. This is, a, this is actually my unicorn pattern. This, this is the one that I've been coveting that um, McKenna found for me. The second one part, which I thought was the second part of that pattern, and it is, but I thought that's what was needed to complete that pattern, if that makes sense, is the Celtic Sampler by Robertson, which is this. Now, these two together make one huge design, and that is exactly how I'm going to stitch it, because now I own them both. Um, but I wasn't intending to buy a different, a separate pattern. I just didn't realize how, what they meant by parts one and two. Now this pattern kind of took me by surprise. Um, I'm just going to show it to you. It really took me by surprise and I have to read about it. If it's something that is maybe something that's in Celtic designs, if it's um, a symbol that's used in Celtic designs, I need to research it a little bit more to understand why this is in here. But if you look right there, I am not stitching that that design. Um, I don't know from what I have researched so far. That design um, is a Buddhist symbol for a bird in flight. But to me, that looks like a swastika and I, I just, I'm not doing that. So I will either close it up or turn it into something um, totally different altogether. But I, I just can't stitch that the way that it appears. But I still want to, want to understand why that would be in there um, and what that was intended to represent. So I'm still going to research it. Um, but I thought that was pretty interesting. So these two designs together make... Um, one huge design which is right up my alley right so that's in the i'll finish that one day someday never pile um the other item that mckenna found for me she didn't find this for me this was actually in one of her attic live sales and i came in late and she brought it to my attention because she was like i just saw something that i know you would love and 
apparently it was so it was something that just screamed my name because Emily said in the chat that she was about to like get it for me because it just screamed my name and they were right this is the Fractor Peacock by the work basket so that's pretty awesome um excited about that and then finally the last item that I bought I saw it I don't remember where I saw it but as soon as I saw it I had to have it and it is kind of like the Celtic sampler design where there's multiple parts that create one design. But this is called Takata number no. four by the drawn thread. And it's a whole bunch of specialty stitches. Like this is part one, this is part two, this is part three, or you can do the whole entire piece with all three bands together, which is what I intend to do because I got all three parts. But I thought this was fascinating when I got the um, the whole pattern. It gave a background and I just thought it was fascinating. Um, it gave a background on why it's called Takata. I thought it was just fascinating. So I'm going to share it with you. Um, it says a Takata in musical terms means literally a touch piece. It is a musical form written for solo instrument in a freestyle characterized by full chords, rapid runs, high harmonies, and other virtuoso elements. It is designed to showcase and improve an individual performer's skill on the particular instrument for which it was written. So this design, number four in a series, is a Takata for needlework. It was designed to show off an individual stitcher's skills and for learning, practicing, and improving needlework techniques. This is a quote unquote touch piece for embroiderers. Takata 4 has been divided into three booklets since it is a very large design and the number of pages that can be bound into one booklet is limited. This booklet contains complete instructions for working the 14 horizontal bands of part one. None of the rest of that is interesting. I thought the explanation for why it was called the Takata was fascinating. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. And it's also not a booklet. So I don't know why it's said that way. It's, it comes the way, um, most patterns come in that plastic bag. However, I will say, um, the quality of the paper and of the pattern is excellent. It's like cardstock paper, nice glossy paper. Um, so it's really well made pattern but um obviously i'm going to be making working copies of that um so that's it for now that's all i have this was actually 30 minutes which was a lot longer than i intended um so i will probably just wait until next weekend to upload um this video and i'll give you an update on esther's waves um and let you know what my next project is going to be in the rotation um, but until then, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, um, and I'll see you on the next update. Bye. Hey guys, it's Letitia, just giving another quick update. Um, today on Instagram, Stitching with Dar, hi Darlene, asked um, about my rotation. So I thought I would explain a little bit about my rotation and how it's organized. Um, you guys remember in... Uh, I think it was a couple of video go videos ago, um, I pulled out randomly 12 projects trying to decide what, it, what I wanted to work on next. And I decided um, that the 12 projects that I pulled out were going to be the 12 whips that I work on this year. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to focus on a finish um, for all of them, but I do want to touch all of them this year. So the way that I worked it out, I decided first, what did I want to finish in 2019? So up here in the upper left-hand corner, you see I have nine um, that I'm focusing on, and I think it's actually one more in the mix right now. Um, this isn't necessarily my stitch nine. This is what I did um, organized right before the new year ended. 
but you see it includes Desiderata, Tribal Monkey, Amtrak, My Jacobian Bell Pole, Blue Moroccan Lace, Erica Bidou because she's almost done, My Sunflower um, for Troy because I need to get it done, My Oriental Orchid um, from 2006 that is very close to a finish, and My Linen and Threads Peacock Sal um, that's going to be worked on throughout the year. Then the rest of the ones that I, pull, that I pulled out, I decided I wanted to work on um, for high tea. So I'll pull one of these out um, on the last Sunday of every month. And that includes my plum pudding, not quite white work, a little Quaker-esque, Peacock Badger Unicorn, Funky Fish Carnival, Esther's Waves, Opid, Opus Magnuson, Peacock Garden Mandela Tiramisu Gypsy Queen, and Courtney Collection Peacock, the one that Emily gave me for my birthday, and good in everything. So I'm currently working on Esther's Waves because that was my new year, new start. Not new start, but um, so I colored that blue for the month of January because I'm working on that for the 1st through the 15th, as you can see in the key right here. Then from the 16th through the 30th, I'm going to work on Desiderata. Um, so the yellow means I'm going to work on it for the second half of the month. The blue means I'm going to work on it for the first half of the month. So here you see I'm working on Blue Moroccan Lace in the Jacobian Bell Pole next month, Amtrak and Erica Bidou in the next month, so on and so forth. So the way this is organized, I'm going to have at least eight weeks um, of progress, not of progress, but eight weeks to work on each of these top um projects throughout the year, which is about two months. So that's what I mean when I say I'm going to focus on a finish because I'm still working on them for two months throughout the year. I don't have anything in here for sun, for the sunflower or the oriental orchid because the oriental orchid I'm working on um, every Friday this month because that was my December high tea start or whip rather. So I don't have this built into the new year because I am anticipating fin finishing it by the end of this month. So the next one that I'm going to work on is Desiderata. I may or may not get it finished in this rotation. Let's say I get it finished in April. That will leave something else probably from this group down here at the bottom to be pulled up to work on in July or October. Or I may rededicate it to some of these other Focus on a Finishes. Um, but I do want to somehow get... Um, Esther's waves up into that rotation because I might be able to finish it if I do two or three two week rotations for the remainder of the year because I've been working on this for two weeks and I'm almost done three bands. Um, I'm lying. I'm almost done the first two bands. There's 11 bands in total. Um, but some of the bands are not going to be as time consuming as like the one I'm working on now. So long story short, I plan to work on everything up here in this top section for at least two weeks in rotation to focus on a finish for 2019. And then the other ones that I'm going to pull out, I'll be working on for a month, um, at least one month for the, what am I trying to say? One month, every month in the year. Um, but keeping in mind, I'm only working on them on Friday nights. So that'll make sure some love is given to them. Um, but they're not necessarily part of my focus on a finish rotation. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it. But this is my um, stitching journal. So just to show you what it looks like, this is my January 2019 tab. It shows all of my whips, all of my whips, all of my whips. And this is probably not everything. Um, not necessarily everything that I'm working on right now, obviously. Everything I'm working on right now is in the page I just showed you. But these are all of my whips, and I'm showing the ones that I want to focus on a finish. This gray part shows a grid of um, the calendar, when I'm working on it, when that little purple dot under the AD column, that's that little purple, I can't see what I'm doing. That right there, that marks high T. And as you can see down here, that green box means that whatever that is, is going to be my high T for the month of January and, or the month, hmm, the month of January. And that's going to be my Opus Magnuson. 
Um, and when I scroll down a little bit further, I'm tracking, gosh, I have a lot of whips in there, don't I? So scroll down a little bit further, I'm tracking my purchases and I gotta change the date there, but keep in mind, um, I am not buying anything, um, but I am keeping my two subscriptions to Color and Cotton and Silks For You. I may or may not be canceling the Silks For You. I'm not sure, I still enjoy receiving them, but I'm not canceling my Color and Cotton. Um, and then over here, I put down my new starts. Didn't have any new starts in January. Um, I had Esther's Waves, but it was a restart after I realized I finished, I was doing it wrong, that I have my marks for my finishes. Um, I have none. <laughs> and this next tab over is my Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, and I have one. So right now I'm reading, um, Paper Ghosts, so yeah. That's my pop sugar reading challenge, but I'll, I've already talked about that. But I just wanted to show you my rotation um, because Darlene asked about it. And that's basically my rotation as it is, two weeks at a time. Um, and I've found that that gives me a lot of progress. Um, and it's not too long or too short. For me, it's a perfect amount of time. So we'll see how that goes and see if I can get through this year with these finishes. We'll see. All right, that's it for now. Bye. Do a quick update to show you my Twisted Band sampler that is back from the framers. Um, this is the detail on the frame that I found. I had a coupon right after Christmas. I think I went the day after Christmas, two days after Christmas. Um, I had an excellent coupon at Joann's, so this is the first time that I took a piece to Joann's to be framed, um, as opposed to my LNS. And as soon as I walked in there, I saw this frame, and I knew that was it. I didn't even know the price, but I was hoping that it would be decent, and it really was. And as a matter of fact, when I went to pick it up yesterday... They gave me $40 back in cash. Now, I don't know if they rang up the frame wrong. I don't know if, um, I don't know what they did, if they just gave me a misquote, but I was more than happy to receive my $40 back. So in all, in all actuality, this was shockingly inexpensive um, to have framed. I didn't get a mat done. I didn't get the museum glass. Um, I did look at a mat, but between the frame and the actual design and the specialty stitches, it just seemed like there was a little too much going on. Um, so I just asked for an inch of the fabric to be seen and let that serve as a pseudo mat. But I'm very pleased with how it came out. I'm still not sure of how I'm going to hang it, if it's going to be vertical or horizontal. But one thing to keep in mind, my signature right there, LB 2018, um, is on a vertical orientation. So it's not hung right now. It's just leaning on my couch. Um, and that's just for the purposes of filming this, but I did want to give you guys a peek and let you know how it turned out. I am super, super happy with the frame. The framing job is good. Um, it looks great to me, but the frame man oh man that's a, that's a good one that's a good one i love how worn it is and how distressed it is i just love it um and when i went to pick it up i noticed they had another one just like it but in more of a walnut this is more of like um a, a, i guess a redwood type of finished um but I, I just couldn't have picked a better frame like i said i knew it as soon as i saw it um so there she is. There she is. All right. See you next time.